Hi, and welcome to Mooney Eni's Cooking School. Today we're going to be making orange rosemary glazed ribs. And it's one of my favorite recipes to make during the summer. Um, it comes together very easily. And we're going to start by doing a first slow roast of these ribs. So I just have a rack of baby back ribs here. And I'm going to start by making a dry rub for them. Now the ingredients are pretty simple. So I just have some minced garlic, minced rosemary, salt, and then red pepper flakes. And I'm just gonna combine these in the bowl. Just a big pinch of red pepper flakes. This is about, I'd say two cloves of garlic. And then some salt. And we're going to mix that together. It'll create a nice little dry rub. And then you'll want some heavy duty foil, otherwise you can always double wrap these too. You just want to make sure it's an airtight seal on these because they're going to cook for about an hour and a half in the oven and you don't want any of the uh, juices to escape. So you're just going to start by getting half of the dry rub over these. We've rinsed and patted this dry. And then switch to the other side. Okay. And now here's where your foil is going to come in. So you want a big piece of foil. And then I'm going to get these onto the foil. And I want you to notice I'm putting these meat side down. So they have, the baby back ribs have these exposed bones on the top. And then there's that meaty side at the bottom. I'm putting the meaty side down. So we want the meat downsided in the pan. The reason we want it like that is because as these cook low and slow, this is going to render some fat, it's going to render some juices, and if the meat is at the bottom of the pan, it'll kind of be sitting and cooking and almost braising in those juices. So it will make a really big difference if it was on the opposite side um, where the bones were at the bottom, your meat would kind of have a better chance of drying out. So always make sure that your meat is on the bottom side of the pan. And we'll take this foil and just wrap this up. And then get this just in a roasting pan here. Now, I have my oven preheated to about 550, 575 degrees. Um, that's a nice range to be cooking some meat low and slow. You want this to be cooked through all the way and you want the meat to be really tender because the second process um, where we put the glaze on them is only going to take about five minutes at a really high heat. So it's important that you take this nice and low and slow. About halfway through that cook time, you're going to want to rotate the pan so that each side of the um, meat has even exposure to the fire. But otherwise, it's pretty hands off. Once you have it prepped, you're ready to go, ready to get it into the oven. And we'll check back in just a bit. It's been about an hour and a half and it looks like our ribs are ready to go. So I'm gonna pull them out and we'll move to the next step. The yard smells really good at this point. We're gonna take it a step further by glazing them. Although the meat tastes really good just with the dry rub too. So be careful when you open it up because there's so much steam in here because it's so tightly covered. So once you see a little steam release here, just kind of let it, let it release so you don't get burned. It smells great. 
Now you can see that meat is nice and tender. It's kind of pulled away from the bone. It's got a lot of pan juices in here. That one's practically falling apart. So now, again, be careful. I'm just going to pull this out and we're going to move on to the next step. So we have a gorgeous rack of ribs here. Like I said, this is so good even without the glaze. It's nice and caramelized. It smells really good. I'm going to put this just off to the side here. And now we are going to go to the next step or move on to the next step. So I've added some wood into my oven. So I'm bringing the flame up. That high heat is going to be very, very helpful for the next step because I've made this glaze. This is where the orange comes in. So I have a jar of just good quality orange marmalade. I've added a little more garlic, some red pepper flakes, and more rosemary to this, and then a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And it's gonna make this nice, thick glaze. And we're just gonna start by basting this over the top. And what happens, because I have such a high flame in the oven, this is going to just caramelize and char on these ribs. So the ribs are going to be nice and tender because they've cooked low and slow, but they're going to have this beautiful charred crust on the outside. It's going to be really, really good. And I'm just putting this in the same pan that I had it roasting in. Okay, and be kind of generous with it. Start with just half over the top. I'm gonna get this back into the oven. Now, you wanna keep an eye on it. This isn't the time to walk away. That sugar in the glaze is gonna start caramelizing. It's gonna start charring. So things are gonna happen pretty fast. Be on standby on the side. You can pull the pan forward, rotate it so that it gets even exposure to the fire. We are going to flip it a couple times too and um, glaze it and keep basting it until I see an amount of caramelization that I really like and I see fitting. So again, it's probably only going to take about 5-10 minutes maybe, um, but keep an eye on it and we'll see you in a bit. All right, so we are going to start plating up our ribs. We've got beautiful color on them. They smell really good. So during the last baste, <laughs> they were actually so tender that part of it just started falling off the bone naturally. And it's fine. We're just going to leave that as is and just keep plating. But look how easily that comes out. So the meat really is just so, so tender, but it's got beautiful color here. They're nice and sticky. They're really, really good, a really good summer food. So when you go to serve, I usually like to leave them in either doubles or in a group of three when I serve. I think they, they're just so fall apart and when people grab them, I mean, they usually get that serving anyway and they look really pretty. So I'm just gonna leave that one as is. And you can glove up if you want to and be careful because this is pretty hot. So I've made these for barbecues before, and they are a total hit. They're so good out of the oven. The meat just braises beautifully. And 
One of the things I really like about it too is that they're so easy to prep. It's a super simple ingredient list, really widely available, and it's just easy to make in advance. So if you have to do that braise or that big roasting step ahead of time, you can pull it out, leave it in the afternoon, and then as your guests come over, you can do that final glaze step and they're ready to go. They are always a hit and they're so, so good. Enjoy.